Hey guys, it's Jessie here from Tonkadale and today we're talking about perennials for continuous bloom in a pollinator garden. Mm, one of my favorite topics. But first I just want to say a few words. I really believe that what we do here at Tonkadale is valuable. It improves people's lives and adds color and joy and meaning to the world around us. That's why I get up every day and do what I love to do. When the events of this week, when things like that happen, school shootings, grocery store shootings, um, children getting shot and killed on the streets of Minneapolis, it simply breaks my heart. It makes me question my belief in what I do every day. Does it really matter when there's so many other difficult things happening in the world? but it does matter. And because I'm here and I do what I do and I have the opportunity to talk to all of you, I can say it's important that we get out and we vote for leaders and we figure this thing out. We gotta get control on this so our kids feel safe in school. I'm not only a businesswoman, I'm a mother. I have a fifth grader and a third grader. So this hits hard. I can't look them in the eyes and say, it is safe for you to go to school. And that's hard. That's a hard reality to get up and face every day. So with that, I think we gotta just get up and do what we do every day, do it with passion, work as hard as we can, and then do a little extra to make things right. We touched on this a little bit last week when we toured the perennial garden department. We have some amazing resources for you. This is a legit sketch of a pollinator friendly garden that's gonna offer continuous bloom all season long. And then we have a care card, 10 tips, for, 10 tips for pollinator planting. And this just talks about kind of the strategy behind creating a pollinator garden. And I think the biggest takeaway when thinking about our pollinators is like, we don't exist without them. So we need to do as much as we can to support the ecology and the communities that they live in. And it's not that hard. You can go over care guides and blogs and this and that. The bottom line is plant plants. That's what's important. Let's talk about some plants that bloom early, mid and late summer that our pollinators are sure to enjoy. So here you have Pulmonaria and Pulmonium, a dynamic doer for a part shade or shade garden. Uh, these are early bloomers and this one, Pulmonaria, is actually called Raspberry Splash. So most of the pulmonaries you'll see do have blue flowers. This one has a gorgeous raspberry flower. Now the Jacob's Ladder. This one is called Stairway to Heaven and I love that cream and green variegation. This one gets tiny blue flowers that teeny tiny bees and hoverflies love to visit. So don't forget about some of the shade garden varieties that do attract pollinators because mostly we talk about the hot sun lovers, which is mainly where the pollinators be because they need to be warm to be active and buzzy buzzy. But some uh, part shades are good to include as well. Okay, here we have salvia. Salvia is a no-brainer for pollinator-friendly plants. Salvia are also deer resistant. They love full hot sun and can tolerate drought. There's different heights, different colors, different chunkinesses in the flowers. Um, this one is called Cardona and we love it because of the dark purple stems. Teeny tiny bees and flies will visit these flowers. After the first flush of flowers fade, simply cut them back and they will rebloom again. So we love our salvia. It is a great plant for Minnesota gardens. Uh, Nepeta or catmint is also in that blue or purple color family. You can see the teeny tiny blooms starting to develop. These are a mid season bloomer and they smell um, minty. They are part of the mint family. We know this because of their square stems. The silver foliage really plays well with all kinds of other garden plants. And you wanna make sure to look at the varieties. Your standard variety, like the Walker's Low, that's gonna be a big aggressive variety, but there are newer varieties that have a more compact habit. This one's called Little Titch, and this one will probably get to 
two feet tall or not even. And this is gonna be more controlled growth if you like a tidier look in your garden. We talked about Monarda last week. And if I didn't get the point across strong enough, this is a must have in a sunny perennial garden. You will be rewarded a gazillion times over by the amount of hummingbirds that love to visit Monarda. Sitting on the porch, drinking my coffee, cruising the internet, watching hummingbirds. Mm, best day ever. We touched on sedums a bit last year, but don't forget that sedums can also be a ground cover. This one is called, I thought this one was called coral carpet, but apparently it's called Prima Angelina. The ground, anyway, the ground cover sedums are so pretty. They get this amazing uh, burgundy, coral, lime green color with little yellow flowers when they finally burst into bloom. They do bloom a little bit earlier than our upright sedums, which are gonna be our late summer bloomers. Their big broad heads are the perfect place for big bumblebees to land because they can hold them up. Also butterflies that just need to take a little break and rest their wings. Sedums are drought tolerant, deer resistant, salt tolerant, um, tolerant of clay soils. This super sturdy plant for our Minnesota summers that can be really, really hot, really, really dry, really, really humid. We just, we just don't know what's gonna happen. The variety of colors in the foliage creates interest all season long and the flower heads can be dried and used in a vase or left up in the winter for some winter interest as well. This one might be a little bit of a sleeper variety. It's the Kilone or turtle head. I love it and you should love it. There are different heights. I do like the more compact varieties, especially this one called Tiny Tortuga because you not only have this really interesting uh, serrated foliage, but these dark kind of mauvey purple stems that are interesting as well. These are gonna bloom in the late summer and into fall and the flowers are pink. They look a little bit like a snapdragon. And they have little lips and the bees, they just whoop, they go right in and they whoop, right inside those tulip flowers and they're gorgeous. So Kilone is one not to miss for your late summer blooming pollinator friends. All right, here we are in the native plant section. Native plants are gonna be the truest, best food source for our pollinator friends. However, it's good to mix and match. Native plants can be very big, very aggressive. They can naturalize if, if untamed. So they're not like the perfect solution for every garden, but knowing that they're here, knowing that they exist and working them in where, you're, where you can is really important. They're gonna have higher food quality for our pollinators. And there's a lot of research being done just to see like what is the best to plant. Is it the native varieties? Is it cultivars? Which cultivars are they? So make sure to stop by the native section. These are gonna be all wonderful choices for pollinators and wildlife in our yards. A uh, few to point out, the wild bergamot. Um, this is our native Monarda. It gets a purple flower. It's really, um, really nice. You need a big area so you can let it roam. We have the cup plant. This one uh, kind of looks like a sunflower. It gets, a, it gets really tall, probably six feet tall with a really cool sunflower shaped flower at the top that kind of follows the sun. This is a really neat one as well. All right, this is the Baptisia australis and it looks, it looks a little shrimpy in the pot, but this one is shrubby. This one's real cool. So if you have space for it, I would highly recommend the wild blue indigo. It's actually in the legume family. You can kind of see the leaves um, are reminiscent of peas or sweet peas. You get these really vivid blue flowers that go into kind of a pea pod as it sets seeds. A uh, really dark, beautiful pod late in the summer. And it's just, it's stunning. So if you have the space, make room for the wild blue indigo. All right, we're right back where we started, but guess what? We learned a lot and we're gonna try something new. We're gonna go out this summer and plant plants because that's what our pollinators know and love. 
Thanks for watching and we'll see you at Tonkadale. Thank you.